Hello, I am Dr. Heather Neal. I'm co-founder and CEO of Global Nutritional Healing, and I'm here with my other co-founder. Hi, I'm Joy Feldman, co-founder of Global Nutritional Healing and director, and we are here today with Michaela. Uh, Michaela, introduce yourself. Tell everybody about who you are. Hi, I'm Michaela Fauci, owner of Mineral Tailoring. I love to work out with burned out moms and supporting their families. Wonderful. That is so, wonderful. so we're here today. We're going to talk a little bit about, now we look at a lot of heavy metals on the, the hair tissue mineral analysis, but we're going to be talking a little bit today on aluminum. So what are some of the sources of aluminum? Like um, I know underarm deodorants, I mean, those are, people don't even know that aluminum, and they're starting to, like I go into the grocery store now and I see all of the labels now are saying aluminum free, you know, so, so there is some more awareness. Uh, and pots and pans. I mean, people spend a lot of money on very expensive pots and pans and often they're, you know, filled with aluminum, which leaches onto the food and can cause other issues. Bake some baked goods, um, baking soda. Um, right. Yeah. 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 Any other ones to add? I think uh, for me, because I deal with a lot of moms, the biggest one that they're surprised about is a baby formula. Oh. Huge amounts, high levels of aluminum and baby formula, yeah. which doesn't necessarily have to be in there. They just don't. They just don't have controls on it. So lots of lots of aluminum and baby formula. Right. Oh, Tap water is that... another one. Oh yeah. Pollution. Air. Yeah, yeah, air quality. We had someone come up. I live in the Shasta County in California, and we had somebody come out. It was quite a few years ago, but they did uh, air testing. They tested the air, and I didn't know all of the chemical names, but I, we work with aluminum, so it stood out to me that it, it was high in our air. So I looked out at my vegetable garden, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're getting you're getting a dose of aluminum you know <laughs> oh, you know gosh. yeah another so, source i know is um uh, medications tylenol aspirin mm -hmm. makeup mm -hmm. aluminum and yeah makeup too. oh and acids and and acids if i yeah my father-in-law he i do hair testing on him and he was i don't know why he started ant acids i guess he was having probably eating something and he was started taking a whole bunch of them and they weren't doing the tricks. He kept taking more and more. And then he started getting other symptoms. So we did a retest on him and on a retest hair tissue mineral analysis and his aluminum. I mean, I've been working with him for years. His aluminum was off the chart wow. and I didn't, I said, what are you doing? He goes, I'm, uh, we went through everything. He's like, well, I'm taking, I'm going through Tom's and this other thing, like daily you know I'm like oh <laughs> so we figured out that yeah the aluminum was coming from there but it was also causing like fatigue he started getting other symptoms they didn't normally have well you know? we, should, we should talk about what how it impacts the body um aluminum yes, so definitely have an idea about why we're even talking about this Michaela, exactly like <laughs> symptoms of symptoms yeah. of aluminum yeah, yeah, that'd be a good one. You want to address that, uh, Michaela? Yeah, I yeah. Aluminum's my uh, one of my favorite subjects because that was one <laughs> of my biggest problems myself. But the biggest problem with aluminum is the inflammation. It's highly inflammatory, so it causes a ton of inflammation. So you can think of like autoimmune disorders, cancers. Um, has a high affinity for the brain. So um, they've done brain biopsies and found that people who've died of Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, dementias have much more aluminum in their brains than people that have died of other causes. So, you know, brain inflammation can cause what anxiety, um, depression, uh, epilepsy, you know, other than the, obviously the neurodegenerative disease, but those kind of symptomologies can be there as well. Um, you know, learning disorders, uh, vision disorders, all kinds of things. Yeah, tremors. things you don't really, things, oh, tremors. Yeah, that's right. Michaela, you had, Horrible tell us a little tremors. bit about that. What was your... You had a lot, a lot of aluminum, right? Yeah, I started out. I think when my first test, it was the aluminum was like four point two, four point three, so something like that. Off the chart, essentially. Off the charts, yeah. And, okay. Um, and then you know, where it right away went down. But then as I detoxed it years later, it took a couple of years. Uh, 
the um, tremors while I was detoxing it were back full fledged. And I realized that it was really associated with that. And then once um, that detoxed, I, you know, I think I had a couple other episodes of minor tremoring. I mean, I mean, it's been gone for years now, but I, I, you know, I kind of think that that had a lot to do with the tremors. I had a lot of tremors. Interesting. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of other brain issues as well, like, you know, panic attacks and things like that before mm-hmm. I was on this program. Right. Well, aluminum, like you just said, it, it passes the blood brain barrier. So that's why we're seeing it. They're, they're seeing it in uh, autopsies of people that have had dementias. They're high, seeing high amounts. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, there's, I mean, the uh, I had a gentleman who had a really bad brain frog. And once we got rid, we saw he dumped a, a whole lot of aluminum. It was like, he, I, I think he went on to like, uh, he was, tra- he was a trainer of some sort and he had to be like really on top of it, but the brain fog was just making it almost impossible for him to do his job. And I just remember, uh, and I didn't, we didn't know specifically that that was the metal that he was d- dealing with because, you know, as on a hair test, you, you see that things come out and the, the aluminum just started pouring out of him and he started the brain fog lifted, <laughs> you know, bye-bye yeah. brain fog. <laughs> so yeah. I, oh, go ahead. You go ahead, McKenna. Oh yeah. I was just going to say that, um, I have a client that um, six year old and started working with him, I think when he was four, super hyperactive um, speech problems, stuttering. Um, first test, high aluminum, high copper, really high aluminum and high ish copper. Um, within about six months, the speech impediment got a lot better. Hyperactivity is still a bit there, but it has died down some. So, um, yeah, I really do think the aluminum was having, was causing the speech problem that he had of stuttering. Right. Well, and and I guess for everybody listening, they probably want to know how do we remove the heavy metals? How do we get the aluminum out of the body? What are our techniques? What are our methods? And Michaela, please share what you've done. Um, Well, I know that, you know, obviously we put them on the the nutritional balancing program and I know that zinc, calcium, magnesium are highly antagonistic to aluminum. So those will help. Say that again, it. zinc and what? Zinc, magnesium, and calcium yeah. are antagonistic to aluminum. So they will help the aluminum, the body detox the aluminum from those mm-hmm. enzyme sites. Um, another thing I know we don't use is you know necessarily in our program, but that has been studied is uh, silicon rich water will also detox the body from um, aluminum. So silicon will form a bond with aluminum and, and detox it out. So you can get like Volvic water or uh, Fuji water. There's different waters with high amounts of silica in it. Mm-hmm. And it will actually make a bond with aluminum and then detox it. Nice. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful addition, you know, to the program, you know, so, yeah. but it's all about minerals, really, you know, mm-hmm. balancing the minerals. You increase the body's energy. That's what we do is we increase the body's energy. And in doing so, our body starts getting rid of these metals, the replacement parts in the body, you know, essentially, you know, our body is like using them um, or getting stored in different areas in our organs. So when we start improving our energy, which that's what we do with the program, then the body's like, oh, oh, I can get rid of this you know, this aluminum that's been stuck in my bones, you know, because it, it can cause soft bones. That's another, mm-hmm. I, forgot, I just remembered that, you know, aluminum can replace calcium in the bones. So mm-hmm. aluminum is a soft metal. Yes. So we, you know, we don't want to walk on, you know, mm-hmm. we want legs of steel, right? Not, <laughs> not, uh, I'm trying to think of something really soft, jello, you know, <laughs> I think um, just for our listening audience, um, I'm sure people are interested about how long do you think it takes? I know that that's a wide open question, but maybe you can just um, touch on a rough time frame if people, you know, decide they want to work with you or and, and take on this program about how long until they would see a shift and when they would start to see the aluminum um, decrease in their bodies. Do you want me to answer that one? Or yes, sure. Go ahead. Let's see. 
Yes. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm, we can all answer, but go ahead. <laughs> we can all answer. <laughs> okay, so from my personal experience, um, what I've noticed is that kids seem to go through that detox quicker. They're yeah. like, you know, it's like three or four months, I'll start to see some of the metals, whether it be copper, aluminum, mercury, start to go up. Um, adults, uh, it seems to be a lot longer. Like uh, my example, it took years for that big dump. I think it was three years for me personally, but I was very, very sick. Um, I have other clients where it's been a year, year and a half. Um, I'll see some come up with the real big dumps. It seems like it takes longer. That's my personal experience. But you guys might have some other things. Yeah, yeah that's the same. That's the same that I see too. Okay. So, you know, and it depends on, you know, if somebody, like you said, if somebody's not, if they're just doing this to prevent health issues, we might see some of these things come out quicker. But if it's someone who's compromised, which... I think all of us have started out <laughs> not feeling well on these programs. Uh, that's why we found them. Um, it can take longer for some of this stuff to uh, metabolize and come out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I did want to tell you, I forgot to tell you a case study that I had with, um, I had a, a, a lady on the program and her mom, she had to put her in an assisted living because she was, uh, diagnosed with dementia, uh, high blood pressure, and there was two other things. I think it was uh, sugar problems, diabetes. And so we got her, she wanted to get on the program, but the facility would give her, they agreed to do the supplements, then, you know, they're not going to do the diet and some of the other stuff. But so they, we got her started on the supplements and it was about eight months. And she was no, she was the, the email, I was so happy because she sent me an email saying that she was cleared of dementia, like wow. no longer had it. It was gone, That's um, completely gone. And wow. her uh, blood pressure also stabilized That's and her sugar was better. So um, her sugar level. So it was, and, and I, on her hair test, because we are talking about aluminum, <laughs> the, the aluminum was uh, really high on her hair test. It was above four, um, which is off the chart. So, uh, when we saw that started coming down, but some other things did improve and she uh, was able to get out of the assisted living. Mm -hmm. so, That's amazing. I just had a question. Did she start with the four or did you see that later? Did she start with what? Sorry, did she start with that high aluminum that you said was a four or above? No, or did she, she didn't start later? with the, I didn't see it. Okay. You know, that's, that's pretty common too, you know, uh, that when we have lower energy, I know even on my own hair chart is that I thought I had no metals whatsoever, <laughs> but I was so my oxidation are, it just means I, I metabolized my food so slow and everything was so sluggish that my, the metals were not coming out and I couldn't detoxify. I was too tired. I didn't have the energy. So uh, it wasn't until we got a couple of hair tests on her that we started seeing this really high aluminum uh, come out. Yeah, great question. Mm -hmm. Did we cover? Is there anything else we need to? I think we talked about the important aspects of, you know, where you find aluminum, how we help people release it from their bodies, and um, diet a little bit. Do we do you want to touch on how that plays a role in all of this as well, maybe? Yeah. Well, diet, I mean, it, you have to be careful of what foods you're right. eating, you know? Yeah, I definitely. Think covered everything about aluminum. Yeah. I mean, I think the only thing I, I forgot to mention was we want to decrease your exposure. Now, if yeah. it's in your air quality, I mean, you know, yeah. we yeah. have to breathe. So, <laughs> you know, um, but if, if you can look for, uh, you know, baking powders that are aluminum free if you're going to cook with it or uh, you know filters filtration so I know some filtration systems can help with the water uh, you know decreasing it in tap water and the, so there's other things you can do uh, under arm deodorants notorious even like the crystal they're called I think they're called crystal yeah types yeah I um, had a client call and she was using that because we were trying to figure out why her aluminum was going up and she, we got her, she showed me her crystal and I said, read me off the, the ingredients. And on there was alum potass. 
Wow. So it didn't say aluminum, but it had aluminum in it. It was mm -hmm. aluminum uh, with a potassium chemical. So, you know, I think that's kind of a, it's an important point, Heather. Um, we all need to really pay attention to the labels. Yeah. Um, you know, educate know. ourselves, pay attention, look at everything, ask questions, and, um, you know, just stay educated and aware of, you know, the latest and the greatest information around these things. Yes, yeah, definitely. If you, oh, go ahead, Makina. Oh, oh, I was just going to say, I, I think that I tend, and people in my circles tend to take it for granted that people just know that there's aluminum in deodorants, but be surprised how many clients I've mentioned that to and they, well they had no idea you know they had no idea and then you know I know that they've done studies on um, breast um, you know breast tissue liquid from the breast um, with women that had breast cancer and compared it with women that don't have breast cancer and they have much higher levels of aluminum in, in their breasts than the women that don't have breast cancer and another thing is is the where the cancer is located in a lot of breast cancer is right there near their armpits so right. you know I don't I don't know if there's been any definitive studies on it, but I know there's a lot of people looking into it. Well, it's definitely a correlation then, because I mean, yeah. where do you put the underarm deodorant and mm -hmm. where are they getting the problems in their breast? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So I do want to mention that if you'd like to start a mineral balancing program to uh, please contact Michaela. We'll have her information, her website. Can you mention your website one more time, Michaela? Yeah, it's mineraltailoring.com. Okay. So, yeah. And so we're just happy that to have you and I um, hope you enjoyed our talk on aluminum. Thank you. Thank you.